Welcome back. This may seem to be an odd text, but we'll get into that in a minute. Our reading today is from Isaiah 58 at the start of the chapter. Shout it aloud, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people the rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please, and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife, and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today, and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will appear quickly. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then will you call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry out for help, and he will say, Here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, and the pointing finger and malicious talk, <clears throat> and if you spend yourselves in, in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild their ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets and dwellings. Well now. It may seem like a funny place to start by making major announcements. That's not the way we tend to run it these days, of course. If you want a major announcement, Discord, Instagram, TikTok, these are the places we need to put this out. On the other hand, since they have no telecommunications in this day, you got to go announce it. But you'll notice that what's going on is not what should be. And that it hasn't changed. This is a call back. Now you would remember this is Isaiah. This is a call back to the readings in Deuteronomy and Leviticus. I'm not talking necessarily Leviticus 25 here. That's a bit of a different story going on. But it's the call to remember the orphans, the widows, those who have no social supports, 
those who need help in so many directions. It's also a radical call you'll notice, and you hear it again in the Gospels. Jesus says these words. For instance, Matthew 25. This is what the Lord demands. You are to be welcoming. Hospitality is a fascinating thing. I want to dwell on that for a minute because we used to be really, really good at this. And life is not that way at this time. Hospitality worked like this. There were tens of thousands of people on the road during the Depression. My grandparents were farmers, and they would have people, usually one at a time, but sometimes in groups of two or three, who would show up and ask my grandfather if there was any work to be done, because they always wanted to put in a little sweat equity. Like, I'll move bales, I'll stook grain, I'll do whatever is needful, I'll slop the pigs, I'll muck out the barn. Anything so I could have a hot meal. Now, what they didn't know was my grandparents went just that little bit extra because they'd heard this, they'd seen this, and they come from people who knew this. More on that in a moment. When you came and sat down, Grandma always had a full meal to set before you, no matter if you were the worst-looking bum who'd wandered in the yard. You got fed. And then what she'd do is she'd make sure you left with road food. Now, I call it road food. My mother said they always had a baggie to take with them, and quite literally, it probably was. Um, it could have been a baggie. It might have been a handkerchief, but they had a little food for while they were going down the road to help hold off the hunger pangs till they got to wherever was next. Nobody ever walked away hungry. All were welcome. All were welcome, and it didn't matter if it was time to eat at the regular meal, or if it was you just wandered in the yard in the middle of the afternoon, you sat down, you had coffee, you got things to go with it. And you left again with something for the road. They knew this because these were the people that they come from. The reason my grandparents were in Canada was very simple. They were starved out in Ireland. The potato famine came along and people were dying of starvation. And they swore up and down that that wouldn't happen if they had anything to do about it. And never once did it happen. This is what God says. I want you to welcome the hurting, welcome the suffering, welcome the needy, and see what you can do about it. See whom you can talk to about it. If nothing else, I know a friend who knows a friend who can call somebody. You make the phone call. You introduce the two people. They get talking about whatever social services might be available. What is your situation? What is going on? But we make the effort to be hospitable. And as we extend that hospitality, it comes back to us. When you give, you will get in return. I would come in before you hear Luke chapter 6. This is what God calls for. This is our job in Lent. To do this 
kind of fast. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, there is fasting that is denial. There is fasting that is cleansing when we eliminate things. And there is fasting that is of your doing. Help us, Lord, to undertake in this season whatever fast is most needful, right, and proper for us so that we are able to do what you call us to do, to be your people working with others being a community of love and care as we are loved and cared for. For your love and your care know no bounds. You sent Jesus to be with us, to walk with us, to live with us. And the rest of it will come to in Holy Week. Be with us now in this time. For all those who are sitting in darkness and depression and see no hope, Lord, help us to help them. If nothing else, send us to stand beside them and help them tie a knot in the end of their rope so that they can hang on long enough we can get some more help. We ask, dear God, that you would send light into that darkness in this time of Lent. We remember before you, Lord, all those who are in need of healing and ask that your gracious, renewing, and restoring hand is upon them. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy that comes through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. And we close these prayers with his prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the blessing of Almighty God who created us, directs us, and sustains us be with you now and throughout this week. Amen.